This program is produced independently. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Doug, <coughs> could you read the opening statement? All requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been met for this meeting of the West Morris Regional High School District Board of Education. Notice was sent to the Morris County Clerk and the clerks of the municipalities comprising Regional District, the Observer Tribune, the Daily Record, and Star Ledger. Notice was also posted in the District Administration Building, Westmore Central High School, Westmore Menham High School, and on the Westmore Regional website. Marsha Asdale. Here. Jamie Button. Kristen Forrester. Here. Joseph Goliath. James Johnston. Here. David Lobron. Here. John Meyer. Here. Tom Rashar. Here. Jackie Schramm. Here. Brendan Millick. Here. Brian Riccardi. Here. You do have a quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> Could we all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the February 23rd special meeting? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Giving a uh, motion to approve the February 27th regular meeting minutes. So moved. Tom? Second. Thank you, Jim. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Staying. Thank you. Do the superintendent's report. First time. Good evening, everybody. Um, I don't plan necessarily on standing up here with every superintendent's report, but I kind of figured for the first one and, and a couple things I want to talk about that we put a little bit of extra uh, attention on it. Certainly, what I want to talk to you uh, tonight is about why I think this district is poised for great things and, and progress. My intention is certainly not to uh, lay out a deep analysis here or a 10-point plan uh, outlining every specific thing that, that we will be doing. Um, but we have had a, a conversation here, certainly uh, about a lot of different things. And uh, I want to extend that conversation uh, and talk about just a few things relevant to our district. One of the things certainly is last week, all of our juniors took the HESPA test. And I, I just want to talk a little bit about what that is, just so that there's clarity. The HESPA test is the 11th grade, our juniors taking this New Jersey standardized test in reading, writing, and math. And what I like about the HESPA test is that it's, it's one of the few tests where there's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with it. All right, what I mean by that, and I think this is important and it is, this is critical, is that it's one of the few tests where the kids all throughout New Jersey, they're taking it the exact same way on the exact same day. So unlike the SAT, where in one school they might be taking, uh, kids might be taking it four times, and another school that, that's not the culture, when it comes to the New Jersey standardized test, the HESPA, it's a pretty good measurement because it's the exact same test. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. So during last week, I want to highlight a couple things. We've had a lot of conversations around here about data. And uh, we want to talk about how we can use data in, in meaningful ways. One of the things that Mr. Ryan did here um, at Central is he used that time to take the ninth and 10th graders and they worked on a writing assignment, and he used the IB rubric, his teachers, they created the test themselves to grade it. The purpose behind that was to use the IB rubric to assess, to gather our own data, and use that data to inform our instruction. And that's the right way that we want to use data. We want to take it and use it so that informs our best practices. And that's not, 
that's not unlike what Mendham did a few years ago when it came to the HESPAs. So we've talked about data. There's a lot of different ways to talk about data. I think it's very important that we emphasize that we need to use it to inform our instruction. So when we look at Mendham did something very similar a couple of years ago, looking at the New Jersey State Standard for 11th graders and looking at the, the results, looking at the, strat the, the student work and develop strategies around it. So if you look, and I realize you may not be able to see this fantastically from the back, but over on the left-hand corner, this is 2008, you can see Mendham High School. And this is the number of advanced proficiency. This is the number of students uh, who, are, who achieved on this very well. The way that they grade the HESPA is they have partially proficient, and that's 200 and below. They have proficient 200 to 250, and advanced proficient 250 to 300. And this is four years ago. I tried to throw up for, you, for those guys uh, in the back there, uh, some schools that are similar to us. You see Burnersville, Randolph, but I also threw in Milburn, Chatham all the way to the right, Northern Valley, Pascac. Those are schools that are a lot like us in some <laughs> ways, Pascac especially, a high school regional school district. And that was a few years ago. They looked at the data, they devised strategies around the student work, identified strengths and weaknesses, and, and this is where we are last year. And I think it's important that the emphasis was on how do we use the data, how do we use the test to improve our instruction so students mm -hmm. can learn at a higher rate. And again, we see some similar schools, Chatham, Milburn, and this is the number of students who are an advanced proficient, 57.1. And again, using the same strategy that Mr. Ryan used at Central this year, focusing on that in, in that perspective. So I, I think that there's certainly a way to look at data, but to help our students. Now, there are about 400 high schools in New Jersey. Looking at that even further, this is your top nine, Montgomery, uh, West Windsor North, and moving right on up, Milburn, Chatham, Princeton, Mendham's number two, and Haddonfield's number one. Now, I called Haddonfield last year and uh, had a conversation with them about how they had such an outstanding number and got a lot of great advice from them. And, and we've had some of those discussions already uh, and, and some good, uh, I think, ideas for next year. I think that it's just there, there's some great achievement here. When I say I'm confident that we're poised for great things, this is one of the reasons why because there, there are good things going on. There are great collaborative discussions going on about how to help kids. Looking at it, there's no high school in the state of New Jersey that improved their reading and writing scores more than Mendham over the last three years. That's by the state's numbers. That is not my interpretation. If you just purely go by the numbers, and that's all available on that website. So again, a, a lot of very good things going on. Okay, so that's the state test. That's, that's the state assessment. And again, my job here tonight for this presentation is, is not to provide deep analysis of every nuance, but to identify some patterns or things we can build on and, and why we all have confidence that we can do so much. Certainly there's a lot going on out there in the world that is part of the national discussion <coughs> from the, the technology, globalization, um, Reinventing America, how we need to reinvent ourselves, look at innovation and creativity. So this is, this is, we need to reach out beyond New Jersey. We can't just be concerned about how our students are doing compared to the rest of New Jersey. So I just want to play out a little bit, a little scenario for you. If you took a high school in New Jersey, let's just say Madison High School, and Madison, uh, they got together with the school in Europe. And, and they also got together with a, a school in Dubai and in China. And they said, look, let's create some assessments in math, in language, in science, and, and let's create a great assessment. And then let's have all our kids take it in a one-to-one -one relationship in the exact same way on the exact same day. All right, and then let's compare results, right? Madison High School would win an award, right? You know, Governor Christie and President Obama would be praising such great innovation, right? 
And that's the kind of thing we need going forward into this new world, right? But I think the point I'm trying to make, and hopefully I can connect the dots, is that we've been doing that at West Morris Regional for the last 14 years in the International Baccalaureate Program. That's what it does. That's what it provides us. And, and I think when we talk about how are we going to meet the needs of this incredibly changing and competitive world, expanding that IB program, it's, we have it. Why are we poised for success? That's one of the reasons why. It's healthy and it's growing. If you just look at some of the, the data here, we see both schools, Westmore Central, Westmore Menham. This is the number of diploma candidates over the last five years and those who are taking it as certificates. So you can see the pattern is pretty clear. It's growing. And we want to continue that. And we can expand it in, in some simple ways. All right, so just, again, in general, we see greater IB diploma students. IB scores throughout the district, both schools, have gone up. The number of kids scoring above the world average has gone up three straight years. And the department scores above the world average have gone up three straight years. So we see some impressive accomplishments by our teachers and our administrators. And I want to make this point. The IB program is not a test. It's not a series of tests. It's an organization. And so when we have teachers who need assistance or they want to improve their teaching to this standard, there's a whole organization to turn to. There's, a, there's an online curriculum center where our teachers can go to. They can look at student work that's been graded by IB examiners. They're on that online curriculum center. They can have discussions with teachers in Dubai or China or Finland. They can, there are online classes. There, we send teachers, of course, out on uh, professional development. So the IB program is, again, it's one of those things that we have in place right now that very few other schools have, and it sets us up for success. So moving forward, there's a lot of other changes going on. So you could say to me, well, Mackie, why the urgency? Why the sense of urgency? Um, and I think that when you, when you look at what's going on in the country, there's a national curriculum coming within two, two years. So there's going to be testing ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade for English, two to four times a year, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade for math. That's a, that's a lot of data coming in. How are we going to handle it? How are we going to use all of that to help our students? Certainly, there's a world going on out there with STEM and Race to the Top and supervision and evaluation. All of these things are changing. It creates a pressing need for us to be prepared to change. And we, need, we can't wait. We've got to start. And, and we're having those discussions now, certainly within the school district. So when we talk about data, when we talk about testing, uh, we need to use it in the right way. And I, and I, I threw this up uh, just about Netflix because I think it makes a, a good analogy. Netflix was a, a, a great, certainly is a great company, and, and I have a Netflix account. And, I, and Netflix, uh, you know, they, they had this community. They had this relationship with their customers and a great product. But they just, they kind of forgot that, I think. This is not only my assessment, but if you read some of the op-eds out there. And they looked just at the data. They forgot about the community. They did some foolish things. And they lost a lot of members. And I think as long as this district keeps our focus on the community and on, on great teaching, then we can do both. You know, we don't sit around in, in Mendham or Central have we sat around and talked about, let's raise HESPA scores. Let's raise the standardized testing scores. What we have talked about is how, how do we teach Shakespeare better? How do we have students write with greater clarity, think deeper, in a more nuanced way? We're not saying how we raise test scores. Those are, that's a subtle point, but it is critical. It is everything to me. And we've got to keep connected to the community and using data for the right reasons. It works. It has been working. It will continue. So I leave a black, blank screen up there. Where are we going? I'll finish with this segue. Um, 
so much of school can be defined with numbers, but so much of school can't be. And I, I, there were so many great extracurricular, co-curricular athletic accomplishments over the winter. I was going to spend some time just talking about that. And then the list became so long that would take me another 15 minutes. So we'll do that in time. A lot of state champions, a lot of phenomenal accomplishments. But I, I do want to bring forward uh, some of our choir singers to talk about that co-curricular activity. Because when we have kids involved in the whole community in co-curricular activities, um, there are things that you can learn on the athletic field or in a performance that I, I feel like it is difficult to teach sometimes in the classroom. And so students have to display courage. They have to, have to develop some sense of resiliency when you're involved in co-curricular activities. So I would like to plug this week, we have My Fair Lady at Central and Thoroughly Modern Millie, all right, at Mendham. And I'd like to praise our choir, Patty Danner and, and Caitlin O'Leary. Uh, I didn't realize this until I started talking to them. The, for this all-state chorus, there's 120 students who are picked uh, from throughout New Jersey, from over 400 high schools. Thousands of kids apply and try out for this. And 8% of the 120 come from Westmore's Regional. That, that's an outstanding number. So out of the 120 kids, we have nine involved uh, who, who made that. And uh, I want to congratulate them. Sabrina Kitts, Marissa Ramsey, Christina Monticello, uh, Stephanie Tercy, Tim Sullivan, Andrea McDermott, Jeff Andrews, Emily Mazzola, Stephanie White. <laughs> So I congratulate them. That is really, truly an outstanding accomplishment. Uh, I think unique. And so I invited them here. And Ms. O'Leary is going to talk a little bit about the choir program. What are you doing it on a helicopter? Can you that quick? <laughs> First of all, thank you, Mackie, for inviting us here tonight. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Caitlin Cogger O'Leary. I am the choir director here at Westmar Central High School. I have to say I am so proud to be here representing the choir program from both Westmar Central and Westmar Mendham High School. Uh, the students here are they're just amazing. They're absolutely amazing students, very talented. They work hard. They have respect. You know, they, they have discipline to, to practice. Um, and it's just, it's just wonderful to watch them grow. Um, as luck would have it, Patty Danner and myself, we are both graduates of the West Morris Regional District. And we are also graduates of Westminster Choir College, which is in Princeton, uh, New Jersey. So we do, you know, we come back. You know, we have a lot of experience. We've done a lot of uh, performances with uh, the New York, New York Philharmonic and the New Jersey uh, Symphony. And we come back because we want to ex show that experience, share that experience with, with our students here. Um, the choral program in both schools is made up of about 200 students. And like I said, we're extremely proud of their accomplishments. And I'd like to introduce to you the students of the Allstate, uh, the members of the Allstate Choir for this year. Um, like Mr. Uh, Pendergrass said, over, uh, over hun hundreds and hundreds of students auditioned for the Allstate Choir. And only 120 are selected. And West Mars Regional District has had a high reputation of always having students selected. When Patty Danner was a student, she was selected. When I was a student here, I was selected. And we've always had big numbers. And obviously today, you can see we've kept those numbers going. Um, we've, like I said, we've always had a strong presence. So I'd like to introduce to you the members. And each of them, would, they really wanted to come up and give a quick speech about what they think of the program. But I thank you. It's a wonderful program here. Hi, my name is Christina Monticello. I'm a sophomore here at West Morris, and I've been in the music program now for two years, and I'm also the treasurer of the choir. And my favorite part about the music program is that it provides a lot of variety for us, and there's so many groups that we're able to join and audition for, <coughs> which is really great because it provides a lot of opportunities, especially if we want to move on in music and go to school for it, which I also plan on doing, so it's very nice to have something like that. 
And I think what's most important is keeping our traditions here because especially in the music program, there's a lot of traditions that the students really enjoy. And I know for a fact that we would really um, feel bad if we lost some of them. So I think it's very important that we keep most of those traditions um, and that we have the right guidance along the way because if we're led on the right path, it's gonna inspire us to keep working hard at what we do and keep pursuing music as we get older. And I think that's very important for us. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Sabrina Kitts. I'm a senior here at Westmore Central. Um, I've been in the program for three years. And um, my favorite part at, of the music program is that we have a chance to perform in outer groups like county, region, all state. Um, whereas some schools, they don't get the chance at all. And then um, my mo the most important part about the, uh, the music program to me is that it prepares us for the future. Um, for our music careers, if we decide to go into that, um, we, can, we have the opportunity to run sectionals in class, um, we have private lessons, and um, it just it really prepares us for our future. And uh, next year, I'll be attending Moravian College, where I will we'll be uh, majoring in music education. Hi, my name is Marissa Ramsey. Um, I'm also a senior here at Westmore Central, and I'll be attending James Madison University in the fall and majoring in music education as well. Um, as Sabrina mentioned, my favorite part of the program here is definitely the fact that we have the opportunities to audition and participate in um, choirs on the county, region, and state levels. Um, otherwise, I know all state can be pricey. Um, we might not all be able to meet the funding for that if we didn't have it offered by the school. So that's something that I think we all really cherish. Um, and also, I think the most important thing to me about the music program here is the stress that it's something that's very credible. Um, it's not just an extra class that, some, that someone takes because they need to meet an extracurricular type um, requirement. So um, I know a lot of us move on to go into music, and I think um, the, Warren, uh, the West Morris um, programs kind of really get you ready for that. So. Hi, I'm Stephanie White. I'm a junior at Menham, uh, Menham High School, and I've been in the choir program since I was a freshman, so I've been in it for three years now. Um, I'm a choir librarian, uh, librarian, and I'm also a co-director of our uh, our girls' acapella group, which is eight girls, um, and we're octet. And um, my favorite part is all the extracurriculars that we have, like counties and regions, but also um, like the small things that we have at our school, like Menham Voices and octet and the guys' group, and there's another girls' group. And um, I think that's really important because we have traditions inside of those groups as well, and it makes us even more connected as like a choir family. And um, just keeping those traditions in the groups is what really keeps us strong, and it would be really different if we didn't have those opportunities, and it helps us to go on and pursue other things, um, especially um, music as we get older. Hi, I'm Emily Mazzola, and I'm from West Morris Mendham. I'm a senior this year, and I'm the secretary over, over at the choir, and I'm also co-director of Octet, which is eighth girls. Um, I'm in Mendham Voices. I've been in county regions and all states. Um, and I'm going to James Madison University as well for business and music. Um, my favorite part of the program is I've made so many friends, like, with all the same interests that we have of singing and like through all the extracurricular activities I have at the school and county re county regions and all state like I would never met any of my closest friends through there and I think also what a lot of other um, people said also was the traditions for Mendham we do the Messiah every year and I generally love that because every year it's like it's nice and it's very quiet, but it's a lot of fun to like go to class every day and learn a piece that is just so challenging and so much fun to be around and just with a bunch of people. So, yeah. 
Hi, I'm uh, James McManus. Sorry, step back a little bit. Uh, I'm a senior at Mendham. I'm a choir president, and um, I'm also the director of Men in Black, uh, the guys acapella group. Um, my favorite part is actually Men in Black um, because it's given me a chance to grow as a leader and also um, to have a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, we do. Uh, I, we kind of grew from a group that did, you know, one winter concert and one uh, pop concert at the end of the year to one that we now do private um, concerts and things throughout the year to raise money for the Music Boosters. Um, so we, it's it's a great program. Um, the the men men in black has has really. I, it's fun watching as a director. It's really fun watching, like say, the freshmen who came in in September, and it's now March, and you can tell there's a complete difference in in the way they act and the way they carry themselves. And it's I think the the choir program does do that, um, performing you know in front of uh, hundreds of people, and it really it gives you a different sense of you know how to present yourself. Um, I think the most important thing uh, the music program is the teacher's dedication. Um, I know I was talking to Mr. Beadle, um, <clears throat> who's the band director at, at Mendham, and uh, he was laughing how he got there at 7 o'clock in the morning and had um, marching band practice, then play rehearsal, and jazz band, and was there until 9.30 at night. Um, and they, they do this of, I mean, of their own accord. I don't know why they're nuts, but um, <laughs> but it, it's really great, and and they encourage us to to grow, um, and they are the reason why this choir the the choir programs are the way it is. So. And, um, without further ado, we'll sing you a song. <laughs> This is uh, Earth Song by Peter uh, by Frank Ticelli. It's an Earth, Earth Song, and it's all about you know what we do on Earth. We live, we see, we sing, you know all the basics that I think it's very easy to forget and sometimes take for granted. So it's and I think it's appropriate for the spring. Oh. 
Hold on one second, please. I just want to give the uh, board an opportunity to ask any questions. <laughs> um, about 15 years ago, the mayor of Chester Township said to me, well, our kids were in elementary school. If my daughter doesn't learn at least what the capital of North Dakota is, I'm going to be very disappointed in our school system. Well, I don't know what the capital of North Dakota is, and I realize now that you don't need to either. Congratulations. Anyone else? Um, do you, do most of you also play a sport or is the music involvement a sport in terms of time commitment? Um, I fence and we just won a state championship, so it must not be that time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play softball, but I, I chose to be in music. So. Yeah, I think um, if you look at a lot of kids in sports, I don't think they necessarily always then also go into the arts as well. I mean, it's a matter of what your preference is. Um, I know a lot of us have been involved in sports, have done things like that, but when you get to be our age, you kind of get to start learning what niche you really fall into or how you pronounce yeah. that word. What you're going to pursue. And mm -hmm. what you want to pursue in life. And I think um, when you're in the music program and so deep in it, as I think all of we are doing all state and things like that, it's because we really have a passion for it. Um, and I think that starts to take up a lot of our time. And um, I don't think we're missing out by not doing a lot of sports. I mean, because this is what we want to do with our lives. So. Yeah, I think sometimes music student schedules match Mr. Beatles. I mean, you're there early, you're there after school, you're there late. So it's especially a lot of now, commitment. Yeah, especially now during the musical season. Um, yeah, I have yeah. friends who were there from 7 o'clock in the morning until you know, 9, 30, 10 at night. Um, but we choose to do it, so. I think there's, yeah, I think there's something really cool about being able to, um, to be so passionate about something at like a young age that you're willing to like put so much time into something. And it's stressful and it takes up a lot of time, but I think I'm happy I know what I want to do now as opposed to later. That teaches us commitment, you know, yeah. how to dedicate ourselves to something and see the end result. I mean, the talent that we've developed and it's an amazing experience. I know for me, like, I don't do sports. I'm not very athletic <laughs> at all, which is really bad sometimes, <laughs> but like, this is what basically I've been wanting to do since like middle school is just sing and it's <clears throat> nice to have this sense of community that like you can get that in sports but it's like more it's it's just like stronger in like a music community. Um, what, what is the tryout process like for states? Do you have to sing all by yourself in front of yeah. a big group of judges? Uh, or? No, no, in a room where they're not looking at you. It's, like, it's, it's yeah. really disconcerting. Backs, our no backs are to them. So, so there's, really there's no feedback. You're just singing and yeah. no, we sing. They, just they have scorecards. They score us. We sing. Um, we sing. Diatonic. Yeah, we sing different we sing scales. Different scales. We sing different scales, and we, we sing, two, sing two, a solo. Two solos. <laughs> we sing a solo w with no accompaniment. We yeah, sing an accompanied solo. We have to sing harmony. Um, so that, we do sight reading too. Yeah. 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 So are, are the pieces chosen for you, or do you have some freedom in the, the it's choice? Chosen. It's chosen. We have to learn prepared pieces. Like that wow. whole one-to-one thing that we were talking about before. <laughs> it's exactly that. Everybody yeah, has to do the exact same thing for each person. <laughs> yep. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Are any any of you that are um, juniors or seniors, are any of you IB students as well? I'm an IB student. I'm a full, I'm like a diploma student. And uh, I mean, I don't feel like doing IB makes it any harder to be involved in the music program. Um, if anything, it makes it better because like I'm doing IB music and I also got involved in like music theory. And I just think it like helped me with music. I'm a I'm certificate, so I've, I'm taking uh, five certificates this year, and I have one from last year. So, um, but no, not not diploma. And I'm doing one certificate this year. I think um, music students, since they tend to have such a demanding schedule, I think you really learn to budget your time, and I think it really helps in the school <coughs> environment as well. Um, I mean, I don't I couldn't. Uh, I know studies have shown that people in music programs do do very well academically as well. So I think it actually really helps us um, to 
do well in every environment. Thank you. If I can just say one thing, I do think what music teaches students, and, and same thing in sports, is you know, you can't wait to the last minute to learn a song. You can't wait to the last minute to prepare for an audition. You know, you can't wait to the last minute to perform at a concert. You know, it takes time, it takes drills, it takes practice, it takes discipline. And I really don't think you can learn that in a textbook. And that's one thing I think any student that comes through, whether it's choir, band, or orchestra, you know, you have to put in the time, you have to practice a little bit each night. It's not something you can cram for. And I think that's the best thing we can teach students is, you know, budgeting time, exactly what Marissa said, budgeting time. <laughs> Know, practicing wisely and, and just you know being strict being strict on yourself um, I can tell you as a former student here this is you know I never I didn't start singing until I came here until I came to Westmore Central so I was 15 years old in, in the choir program and just worked my way up and um, that's what I learned I learned that it's practice you know how do you get to Carnegie Hall practice 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 and um, it's, it's practice, practice. That, that's what it is. That's the best thing I learned, and that's what I hope I can teach my students, regardless if they want to go into music or science or social studies. It's, it's about discipline and practice. So thank you again for the opportunity. Sorry, oh, just sorry. really quickly. The capital of North Dakota is Bismarck. You don't normally <coughs> sing together, do you? How long did you practice to to perform tonight? We got here at six thirty. <laughs> that was wonderful. But I had a ball working with you guys. Bend so inch. Bend the man central. A lot of fun. I just wanted to say, um, when you when you do music, you learn a lot more than you think you're in for. Like I've learned more about Latin and German and music history <laughs> and <laughs> composers than I ever thought I'd know about French. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's right. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you Thank much. you very much. Now we head back to play practice. <laughs>